Are those little feet? <laughs> Moments define lives. Oh my gosh. They are what we remember. That is unreal. Long after the events and the stresses and the uncertainties, moments. Matt Kyle's defining moment could have come on February 24, 2007. Yeah, a bullet hit me like a ton of bricks, and I fell right down. But he and his wife Tracy have no intention of letting that define their lives. Not now. It's something that I've been thinking about a lot. You know, what kind of dad am I gonna be to these kids because I'm disabled? Nine News is on special assignment. Matt and Tracy, an American story. The Pentagon says the war, the fight in Iraq has wounded 32,000 Americans. These are lives forever changed. Tonight, we'll introduce you to one of those 32,000. I'm Nine News reporter Chris Vanderveen. For nine months, Nine News documented something that you and I know happens every single day. It's just that we also know not every single parent has a story quite like this. It is scary, but this is ultimately what we wanted. I don't think you're ever really ready, but we try to be as prepared as we can be. Oh my God. Are those little feet? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the little arms. You tell yourself you're ready. You tell yourself you're prepared. That is unreal. But the moment a certain monochromatic monitor manages to reveal its secrets. I'm like dying to know. That's the moment you realize. I have a lot of anxiety right now. <laughs> ready and prepared is a relative term. It's a boy. I think we're God's comedy hour. Girl? No way. It's a girl? I said C was a girl. <laughs> Things don't happen to people unless somebody knows that they can handle those situations. Three girls? Mm -hmm. Three girls? I think so. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> wow. Three girls. <laughs> One Americans died while fighting in Iraq in February of 2007. 81. Yeah, a bullet hit me like a ton of bricks. And I fell right down. Had that bullet hit a quarter of a millimeter closer to a key artery, that number would be 82. He told me he was paralyzed from the neck down and it was a Christopher Reeve type injury. And I don't really remember anything after that. It was kind of a blur. Matt and Tracy had been married for all of six weeks. I knew the ultimate sacrifice was being injured or, or possibly dying, and I was aware of that, and it didn't matter to me. Is this them coming? Hey, Tracy, Matt! Looking back on all of it, Tracy, woo! they will now say they were neither ready nor prepared for what was to come back then either. And he came home, and he kept his promise. That's all I asked him to do is come home. He did. It was tough, it was exhausting. The sooner I get out of here, the quicker the plane can get in her way. They could have quit. She could have quit. I mean, if it was, if the situation was reversed, he'd be right here by my side too. It, no questions asked, I know it. She's always had this uh, internal drive. That, uh, sometimes I don't know where it comes from, but uh, I, I feed off it sometimes. But they kept going, kept moving, kept fighting. This isn't the end of the world, life goes on and life will go on. We're still gonna have a family and go on with our life just as normal as we were before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure with her, she's like, well, what do you think about having kids? And we've been talking about it for so long and planning it for so long and, and then here it is and it finally happens. It was just, it's just amazing. I don't look at us any differently than any other couple raising a family. Um, you know, whatever, he's in a wheelchair. I mean, that's not, so what, you know? It's, 
that's not that's not going to have an impact on him being a dad at all. Sit. Good boy. It is scary. I mean, I, I am scared because I am in a wheelchair and I do worry about some of the things that I won't be able to do with my kids, but ultimately there's still stuff out there that I will be able to do with them. Leave them in there for a minute. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Doctors implanted two embryos, one obviously split, thus triplets. And for those people that are wondering, they're ours. Yeah. yeah. Trust me, you're not the first to ask. Yeah. Matt sperm? Yep. <laughs> okay, great. Is it great? And trust me, you're not the first to doubt either. You know, there's always going to be people that feel sorry for you or can't believe that you let this happen. And I think we take great pleasure <laughs> in proving those people <laughs> wrong. Coming up next. Do you find new ways to enjoy the things you did before? A new life, a new set of skills, and a new challenge. I just thought this will be smooth because of everything we've already been through. So I wasn't expecting that. Welcome back. I'm Chris Vanderbilt. On average, the U.S. currently welcomes around 6,000 sets of triplets a year. Fertility treatments have certainly upped the odds, but all multiple pregnancies remain, to some extent, high risk. Things happen to people for a reason, and those things happen because we can handle them. And they're probably going to be here in November. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. How you doing? Hi there. Good to see you. Good to see you. They say he who fails to plan, plans to fail. You know, we're very, very fortunate we get to do this. The parents to be no without fail, plans change. I'm just following orders. I don't know, peanuts? Case in point, early ultrasounds on occasion are wrong. Oh. Two, two boys and a girl. Yep, yep, twin boys and a girl. And we're really excited. With triplets, they say you'll most likely deliver early, they'll be premature. So if we hit 32 weeks, hope that's like, 32 weeks is great, anything past 32 weeks is awesome. We got names for the boys right now, one's Matthew David, the other one's Charles Michael, and then Tracy hasn't named the girl yet. So no matter what anyone has ever told you about best laid plans. Think that'll fit me? <laughs> sometimes, oh. those plans. Thank you, Joe and Charlotte. Just go awry for no good reason. I just went home like thinking, why is this happening to us? I, do, I just don't understand it. I mean, I don't understand why so many things can happen in one person's life. So the smaller, the smaller boy didn't make it. One baby was getting really big and one was staying really small, one of the, one of the twins, which is the boys. And um, it's called twin to twin transfusion syndrome. I think that in, in her case, unfortunately, the situation had progressed far enough in one that it just couldn't overcome the stress that it had had placed on it by this process. We kind of had this ideal picture of three babies running around the house. When that changed, we learned of the news. We kind of both went home and sat on the couch and kind of spend time together. Just really messed with my mind. Like, I just thought this will be smooth because of everything we've already been through. So I wasn't expecting that. It's definitely made us a stronger couple. You know, we're willing to do anything to, to you know, to stay together. I wouldn't have been able to go through that by myself, for sure. She's always been there for me throughout my injury now. Well, with all the complications, it's, it's definitely a role reversal. Three minutes shooters, three minutes the target change. You find new ways to enjoy the things you did before. I honestly forget that I'm injured. I am used to it and I don't let it get me down. It doesn't bother me anymore. We'll figure it out. If there's a motto to Matt's life, that's it. It's a, a shooting adaptation made by Be Adaptive. And basically you put the rifle in here and then I have this piece of apparatus right here that I sip on to pull the trigger.
I mean, ultimately, I'm a disabled veteran, and I fought for my country, and that's why I'm in this chair. I'm proud of that fact. So people can stare all they want. It's not going to cut me down at all. There have been, definitely been times where Tracy and I just kind of like, when is enough enough already? Like, when are we going to catch a break? Um, but then we also look at all the good things that have happened in our life, in our lives, and the good things have definitely far away the bad things. Ultimately, 32 weeks would be ideal. How you doing? Good, you look great. Thanks. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing really good. <laughs> this is exciting and life-changing, and it's going to be absolutely insane. But there's bad crazy and there's good crazy. This is good crazy. <laughs> Oh, she's so little. Taskmasters don't typically come in five foot three inch frames. I guess we're ready as we're ever gonna be, right? Tracy Kyle oh, yeah. is clearly on oh, Gus yeah. bed. Not typical. That was a sad look back. So it's safe to assume. Yeah, he says I snore really loud now. This pregnancy is uncomfortable in many more ways than one. Sometimes you'll see his butt come out this way and like then her butt comes out this way and it's like they're pushing on each other. It's starting to become more real the closer we get and, and the further along Tracy gets in her pregnancy. I love coming to schools and telling them about my story. Matt Kyle cannot move his legs. He can move his left arm a little. I was shot in the right side of the neck by a sniper in Ramadi. I think more than anything, they're curious. You know, why I'm in the wheelchair, what happened to me, why I'm wearing this uniform. I felt like somebody basically kicked me in the back and I fell forward, and I was instantly paralyzed from the chest down. I was 25. If there's a question he hears more than any other, it's this. Any regrets? Yeah, I, every, we, all, we all think about it. We all think about it, and I, would, I, I loved it. And I wouldn't, I, I don't regret what happened to me, but I would, Absolutely, in a heartbeat. If I could go over there tomorrow and they said, come on over, I would totally. But if you asked him, where does much of your loyalty now lie? I'm pregnant with twins. Or she's pregnant with twins, I should say, not me. He will tell you that's an easy one. I think she's going to be a great mom. I think she's going to be one of the best moms out there. Oh, look at all these. If the way she fought for me is going to be anywhere close to how she's gonna fight for our kids, they're gonna be fine. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I'm 26 weeks today, so if I, if I make it 32, I'm gonna be really happy if I make it 32. I was a minute apart in the car on the way here. Sorry, that's a contraction. I need a minute. I know. It's not a bad one. Full term for twins is generally 38 weeks. We got here and, and they just hooked me up to an IV and kind of see what happens. The taskmaster is no longer in charge. It's something that I've been thinking about a lot. You know, what kind of dad am I gonna be to these kids because I'm disabled? Eight months. That's how long Matt spent inside a number of hospitals after his injury. A few more weeks. That's how long doctors in Denver will now try to delay Tracy's delivery inside this hospital. I don't want to say, like, return the favor, per se, but... You can. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to, you know, I'm definitely going to do that, for sure, I mean... In a way, it's like coming full circle in the most roundabout way possible. We're good at it. <laughs> we know to be nice to the nurses. Well, what do they say? Uh, life would be boring if your life were that easy or something like that. Coming up next. Let's go through the window here. Hi, guys. Everybody's getting ready. Welcome to the rest of your life. Just another, another challenge for Matt and I, I think. Welcome back. They are the calls you make in haste, the calls that tell everyone it's time. 
Tracy called us and told us it's time. At that time, the worry was, it's too early. Hi guys, everybody's getting ready. You're very close to being born. I'm really excited, that's your Aunt Chris behind the camera, and your mom's back there in the window behind you. That's me. So, I already love you, and I can't wait to see you. <laughs> Just, it's just crazy. Just another, another challenge for Matt and I, I think. Hey, buddy. Okay, it's all right. Maybe I'm... Oh, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. You can tell yourself you're ready. You're prepared. Okay, it's all right. You can tell yourself that. And then a three pound, one ounce baby boy enters your life. You're making funny faces at your dad. And everything changes. Right, buddy? You don't want to pee on me. Meet Matt, as in Matt Jr. I wish I had a picture of that. As for Matt Jr.'s sister, they considered Journey, they tossed around hope. Big stretch. And then they asked themselves what if we needed much more than hope on this journey? Okay, hang on. Faith came in at two pounds, eight ounces. At that size, she won't be leaving the NICU anytime soon. Neither will he. Nope, you ready? But remember that day he didn't die. The day a quarter of a millimeter made all the difference. The day he learned he wasn't done on this earth. Hi, big guy. Matt will tell you this day is why he is still here. It's just the best feeling to just watch that and know, you know, know that we made it. You know, we came out on the other side okay. Hey, sweetie. All the tubes and wires that are hooked up to our kids, they don't scare us either because I was in the hospital for eight months with the same kind of things. Chest tubes and oxygen, nasal cannulas and all that. And I mean, not, none of this scares us. Oh. That was really gross. They're in the best place. They're getting the best care. And it's kind of like when Matt was at Walter Reed, it, it was the best place for him. You tell them that, you know, you were born early and you needed that time to sustain your life and that without them, you wouldn't be here. No, say Matt, but uh, definitely has a little bit more pep in his step or uh, wheel, but. <laughs> well, I don't know, it's just, it's just weird. I don't, I don't feel like a dad yet. Well, I guess I'm starting to dress like one. I don't know. <laughs> They're first now and we'll do anything to keep them safe and and give them everything that we possibly can. There he is. There's the doorbell. Here comes your daddy. Yep, last hospital feeding. I think everything is is in order, ready to go. Ready, we're ready to take her home. Yeah, we're, we're getting ready to take her home the next half hour. And <laughs> Oops, car seat. Okay. Oops, <laughs> can't forget that. So now just start tightening. Problem is, right now they only need one car seat. Ready? Matt Jr. is not ready to come home. What? Not yet. For the first time in their young lives, the twins will not live side by side. You okay, babe? Yeah, it's just sad to leave him here. And no mother on earth is ever prepared for that. Well, Matthew won't be far behind. Coming up. Are you ready? Are you ready? Fatherhood. Oh yeah, we're, we've been ready for a long time. And the God-given right of trial. Hey, hey. And error. Trace. I'll be scared all the way up and until they're born and then, you know, worried until they're 18, got a job and they're at college, moved out of the house. <laughs> so in the bedroom, they put an overhead lift system. In the bathroom, they gave us a rolling shower, big enough to fit my uh, shower chair in there. And 
adaptation is the one ability that binds those who go through life with a disability. Yet quadriplegics are forced to adapt more than most. This is the nursery. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. I can see what's going on with each kid. And it is quite apparent this is Matt's crib. that this parent cannot do what every new parent does at least once a day. Just not being able to, to pick them up out of the crib, a little intimidating, you know, you have to wait for somebody to come over and, and kind of console them physically. Are you ready? Are you ready? I know, he's like, what's going on? You're coming home, that's what's going on. Oh my goodness, he looks totally freaked out. <laughs> what is this thing I'm laying in? Do you see him? Oh yeah. Yeah, there will be those people that think that, wow, it just must be tough. You know, it must be tough for you to, to do what you do. And you know, it is, but if I dwelled on all the negative things that have happened in my life, I probably wouldn't be a very happy person. Did one of the kids poop? It smells like poop in here. All of a sudden, it starts smelling like poop in it Smells here. like poop. What is that? <laughs> could it be our two new kids back there with Whoa. diapers on? It could be. And if there's one ability that binds all fathers and mothers... You ready to be up all night? Yeah. Just totally. It's the ability... I'll do whatever it takes. ...to love without question, without motive, and without hesitation. Me becomes we. Here comes the storm. And we are in for one heck of a ride. People that climb Mount Everest don't look at the top and say, man, that's impossible. You're good. But they take one step at a time and they're at the top and I think we're gonna take it one day at a time and uh, one year at a time and eventually, you know, I'll be sending them off to college or, or walking my daughter down the aisle. And it is gonna be a little scary at times, but I know that as long as we have each other, we'll get through anything. He's so cute. They could have quit. She could have quit. She put every part of her being and every every part of herself into making sure that I got better and that I didn't turn into one of one of those veterans that just sulked in a corner somewhere. Yeah. Now they're here in that place once occupied by every parent who came before them. And I just want to give them everything that I didn't have growing up and give them the best life possible. And if nothing else works... So it will be okay, you know. And they'll just adapt once more. It's gonna mean the world to me. I'm gonna have, you know, a boy and a girl, and I'm gonna raise them, you know, how my dad raised me. They figure it's not like this hasn't been done before. Hey, hey. Yeah, it's better. Oh, that's not better, okay. Everything from my injury to now has led up to us having kids, and it's not about me, it's about them now. Trace! Yeah, yeah. Here's some more good news. Matt Jr. and Faith have become every bit the 2 a.m. waking, constantly pooping, occasionally fussy babies that parents the world over have reluctantly come to expect. All signs point to them being healthy, happy, and in good hands. We want to thank the Kyles tonight for allowing us to become part of their lives for nine very difficult months. Maybe in the end, their story and their fight truly is an American story. I'm Chris Vanderveen. Thanks for joining us. That's so funny. <laughs>